Good afternoon. I'm Adrian Dix, BC Minister of Health. To my right is uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry, our provincial health officer, We're doing our daily briefing on uh, COVID-19 here in British Columbia. I wanted to first acknowledge that we're doing this on the territories of the Musqueam, the Squamish, the Tsleil-Waututh First Nations, and I wanted to uh, introduce Dr. Henry. Thank you. Good afternoon. So for today's update, there's a couple of things we want to do. First, to give you uh, the new cases and the new um, totals that we have in the province. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what this means and, and some of the data that we're using to drive um, and to understand what's happening in our community. So to start with, we um, have 74 new test positive cases today, giving us a total of 424 people in our province who have tested positive for this disease. Um, that is 230 in Vancouver Coastal Health, 126 in Fraser Health, 37 on Vancouver Island, 27 in Interior Health, and we remain at four people in Northern Health. Uh, in addition, we have had five new um, cases admitted to hospital for a total of 27, and of those, 12 people are in ICU and uh, six have recovered. Um, we have one additional death related to the Lynn Valley Care Center, bringing our total to 10. Um, on a positive note, we've had some, uh, uh, we've had um, the person who was hospitalized at one of our long-term care homes is now out of hospital, which is good news. Um, and we have uh, a number of, uh, increases in uh, staff, uh, increased by one in the residents and staff at Lynn Valley Care Centre who have tested positive. I think this tells us again that we have risk around the province and how important it is for us to take a, a pay attention to what's happening in our community and take those measures that we have been talking about all along. So this is not only confined to hospitals, to our healthcare sector, it's also in our communities and the actions that we are taking today make a difference in how we can transfer um, this disease to others. As well, um, I am uh, issuing a new order today, effective today, I am now ordering that personal service establishments must close until further notice, as these require direct personal contact with other people, and that is impossible to deliver while maintaining appropriate distance. So these are things like um, salons, spas, massage parlors, tattoo uh, shops, etc. And I know most of the these businesses have closed, but it's come to my attention that there is still confusion out there about whether um, they should be open or not. So we want to make it very clear that the expectation is that these will be closed. So I'm going to give us a little bit of a look, if we can put up the slide. Um, we've talked a little, uh, quite a bit about what we do in public health and about epidemiology. And epidemiology is uh, the, the study of, of the who, what, where, and when of diseases, and it's about tracking the disease and helping us understand what's going on with it. So we track two curves. And what we have been talking about here for the most part is the number of people who have tested positive on a given day. So the numbers that I gave out today, for example, were the positive tests that came out of our lab over the last 24 hours. And so that is this curve here. Uh, I guess I need to, okay. <laughs> Um, that is this curve there. If we look at what has happened since the beginning of January and the 15th of January, we had our first case. Um, the, the dark blue represents the cases plotted on a, what we call an epi curve by their onset of illness. So there's two things that we're looking at. What you are receiving every day, what we have been giving out, is the number of people who test positive. Those people are people who have been identified by public health as having a risk, having an exposure, they get a test. Sometimes it takes several days before that happens. So when somebody gets sick, uh, it'll, there'll be some time before they recognize it sometimes, and that's one of the challenges that we've had with this disease, that people may go to work, may uh, interact with others before they realize they're sick. 
at some point they realize they're sick, they may see their health care provider, they may go to one of our assessment centers now, and they get a test. And it takes sometimes several days for those tests to come back. In the meantime, public health is doing their investigation, the detailed investigation. And as we talked about um, from the beginning of this, we did very detailed investigations on all of our initial cases where people who are imported from other places. Um, and we find out when people's symptoms start, because that helps us understand where their exposure might be. And with this disease, we know the incubation period is up to 14 days. So we meticulously track everywhere that they had been in those 14 days and determine if there are other people that were exposed. And we keep those people in isolation to see if they develop symptoms, so that if and when they develop symptoms, they're not passing it on to others. So the curves that we're watching very carefully are the dark blue. And this is our epi curve by onset of illness. And this is the one that we will start to see decrease if all of the measures that we're taking are effective. So when we talk about flattening the curve, it's not necessarily the tests per day that is important. It's the number of people getting infected and making sure that we can look back at those days ahead and, and isolate people before they can transmit it to others. So this affects um, you know, this is why we have put in some of these drastic measures that we've been talking about around social distancing. Um, the social distancing, the, the physical distancing from people is what helps us not transmit this infection between us. And this is incredibly important right now for everybody. Um, we know that we've had uh, community cases from, uh, for a couple of weeks now. We know that people in the community are transmitting it to each other. And that is leading to the outbreaks that we've been seeing in, in long-term care homes, in hospitals. It means that healthcare workers are getting infected. They're getting infected in the community and then bringing it into work in some cases or transmitting it between each other and between their families. These are important things that we can affect now. I think, uh, all right, we'll go to one other. I also wanted to give you an idea of what we've been following in terms of the ages of people who are affected here in British Columbia. And what we have in the dark lines are the, the proportion in our population that are in that age group. And what we have in the lighter lines are the number of people that have tested positive for this disease. And as you can see, there's more people in the older age group. We have. We have uh, very few people in the age 10 to 19, so young people. We have nobody under the age of 10 at the moment who's infected with this disease. We have a cluster, a group of people in their 30s to 40s, and that mostly reflects healthcare workers who are involved with our clusters. It uh, also represents up to 20 people now that have been uh, associated with the dental conference that happened a few weeks ago here in BC. So those tend to be younger, healthier people. But we also have a skew to the older people. And again, that represents um, the, the severity of this disease in older people and the outbreaks that we're seeing in our long-term care homes. So I do, um, we will be posting this information on a regular basis over the next uh, coming weeks so that you can have a look at this as well and understand how we're doing at making that epidemic curve flat and out and lengthen out so that we're best able to take care of everybody in our healthcare system. This is our chance to alter the course of this epidemic, and we can do it. We have seen that it is effective in other countries. If we all do our part, it's in our hands right now. So this is our chance to, to stay apart, to connect socially, to connect virtually, to support each other, but to physically distance. And I'm calling on all of you to do that right now. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Henry. And uh, Dr. Henry has noted that we have um, uh, 74 additional cases today. And uh, just to just to put it in context of what the, some of the discussion we've had about acute care beds in the last few days, that represents 27 people in acute care. 
12 people in ICU, which is an increase of two uh, since we last reported. And we also, uh, as Dr. Henry has said, uh, are reporting an additional death today associated with the Lynn Valley Care Home. And uh, our uh, hearts go out to the family and to the people at Lynn Valley uh, for their loss. Um, I wanted to update you on a few um, uh, brief facts. Uh, in the coming week, we'll be updating more regularly the number of tests. Uh, we've been updating it every Friday, as you know, up to now. We'll be updating that more regularly. That will happen on the BCCDC website uh, uh, starting uh, uh, sometime early next week, and so that will give a sense because I think some people, by the time we get around to Thursday, um, uh, look at those numbers and say, well, that's not enough, so we want to make sure people are up to date on that. I want to do a special uh, call out to people who have uh, been in touch with uh, 811 nurses and staff in the last uh, day. Um, and they're very proud of the extraordinary work they do, more than 3,000 calls. So I just want to, you to know that in addition to previous uh, additions, we added seven nurses as of yesterday and 30 patient navigators uh, to the 811 service as of yesterday. We also had a record day with the patient uh, self-assessment uh, um, uh, tool yesterday with more than uh, well over 530,000 f- 530, uh, calls, which was a record day for us on that. And uh, approximately 1,800 people contacted the COVID-19 line. Uh, I wanted to note um, uh, the news release uh, from Vancouver Coastal Health about all of the measures and additional protections that are happening in long-term care, which will be mirrored by similar releases in Fraser Health and Island Health uh, today. Um, and just uh, just to, to finish off, because uh, we want to focus today on the, on what Dr. Henry has said about the progress of, uh, of the pandemic here in British Columbia, that um, uh, just a few points, that um, there's a lot of discussion. I know there's some anxiety about there, about the measures that have been taken, the very strong measures that have been taken here in British Columbia. And I think what, what I said yesterday and what Dr. Henry has said consistently is that they require 100% compliance. We need everyone to comply. Most of these measures are orders. They're also enforceable orders. They're orders of the provincial health officer. It is, uh, and so if you've traveled internationally, you have to stay home for 14 days. You have to stay home for 14 days. That is your obligation, your responsibility to your loved ones and to the community. It's also an order. The no bars, no restaurants except for takeout. Uh, as. Um, as uh, Dr. Henry said, today said in personal uh, services industry, large gatherings, those are all orders. They're the obligation of people not to do those things. They're also orders and they must not happen. As you know, many municipalities have closed down recreational facilities and many other things. Those have happened and they're significant and they reflect what's happened in other jurisdictions. School classes have been cancelled both at the K-12 level and at, uh, at the post-secondary level. Those have happened. And so I, I want to say that, um, again, that um, it's everyone's obligation to comply. And the most important thing, the thing we've been saying uh, here at every briefing, uh, since January, that if you're sick, stay home. If you're sick, stay home. And that is, I think, a key uh, order, a key responsibility that everyone has to deal with the, with the spread of uh, COVID-19. There may be questions, and we look forward to questions in comparison with other jurisdictions, but these are essentially what people are doing everywhere. Um, and uh, we'd be happy to discuss that in the question period. This is really, for all of us, as individuals and as a society, the greatest fight of our time. Our response so far has been good, and it's been human, but it needs to be more than that. It needs to be 100%. It isn't about somewhere else. It isn't about somebody else. It's about you. It's about me. It's about all of us, and that's why it's essential. That's why we need from everyone 100% participation, 100% effort, and 100% compliance with what Dr. Henry has asked. These are tough measures, but tough measures are are as tough as our commitment, 100% of us, to follow them. Thank you very much. We look forward to taking your questions. Thank you, Minister. And before we take... En français, excusez-moi, excusez-moi. Et uh, Dr. Henry me 
me rappelle qu'il faut le faire brièvement, Francis, si vous voulez. Nous en sommes aujourd'hui 76 nouveaux cas de COVID-19 en Colombie-Britannique pour un total de 424 dans la province. Nous en sommes également avec grande tristesse que notre résident de Lynn Valley, qui a été testé positif au COVID-19, est décidé. Nous offrons nos sincères condoléances à leurs proches et au personnel qui a pris soin d'eux. Chaque régie de santé en Colombie-Britannique compte euh, des patients atteints de COVID-19. 230 à Vancouver Coastal, 126 à Fraser, 37 sur l'île de Vancouver, euh, 27 à l'intérieur et 4, toujours 4, au nord. De plus, sur le total de, des cas de COVID-19, 27 personnes sont actuellement hospitalisées, dont 12 sont en soins intensifs. Six personnes se sont rétablies et les autres patients sont à la maison isolés. À compter d'aujourd'hui, les établissements de services personnels doivent fermer jusqu'à un nouvel ordre, car ces services nécessitent un contact personnel direct avec d'autres personnes, et cela est impossible à fournir tout en maintenant une distance appropriée. We're happy to take your questions. Thank you, Minister.